So here we are beneath the bridge that goes over the River Tadus and just here Museum de Caris. That is the Museum of Caris, the transport company of Lisbon. It's just here. So we should see a lot of trams in here, so let's go inside and see what we find. So here we are inside the Lisbon Tram Museum. Here's a model of a funicular railway. Oh, it's quite a small funicular railway. I assume this is one that was once in the city that possibly has been closed. Because if you look here, there's a whole diagram of all the funiculars and the elevator in the city centre. I've no chance to go on that because there's always a big queue. But I've been on some of the funiculars, so there'll be separate videos on them. It's a very interesting little museum they've got. It's got all about the trams and the metro. You can hear the trams are only outside on Route 15, so we're very close to the actual tram lines themselves. And the museum is situated in the depot there, so we should see some interesting trams when we get to that part of the museum. But we've got a bit of everything. We've got old tickets and clippers on display. They've got all kinds of documents. They've got insulators, bells, the diagram there of how some of the old seats were made. This is what it looks like inside the driver's control handle. They've got some uniforms, model of a, another model of a tram. Here yeah, there's a rather nice model of a Caris bus. There's another model of a tram. Yeah, so yeah, lot, quite a lot of different things um, going through to here. There's a model of one of the Siemens trams that we've been travelling along Route 15. Oh, this is interesting. Here it shows you the evolution of the metro. So 1959, that's what it was in my shape. And then of course it grew and grew and grew to its current state in 2012, where it now has four lines. So. Like most cities, the metro has grown, and the metro has been responsible for some of the tram closures, but the tram lines have started reopening. They reopened one in 2018, Route 24. I'm not sure what this is, it's a hospital. Um, it's health service for the, um, the employees of Carice. So you've got in musical instruments. Quite interesting. I didn't expect to find that in a tram stroke transport museum. There's, this is about the metro here. If you look here, there's some pictures of the original metro trains and pictures of what we see today on the metro. There's a model of one of the older tra metro trains here. You can see that. And down here is a model of one of the ones we travelled on. And it's cut away so you can see it inside. So yeah, it's a very, very good little museum. If you come to Lisbon, I recommend coming here. Some metro tickets. So it's a bit of an unusual museum. Because what happens is there's this part. This is more of the small artefacts. If you're wondering, are there any trams on display? The answer is yes, but not in this part of the museum. To do that, we have to get on the tram. So, there's the metro sign. This is cool. Oh, oh metro map. And I think if you press the buttons, oh yeah, it lights up the part of the metro. So you can see I press this button, and it lights up different parts of the metro. So I think what happens now, I have to go and wait at this door. Wait here, I've been told to wait here for the driver. And then we go on a tram to the next part of the museum. Well, that was a bit unusual. I was waiting at that door and um, it said wait there for the driver. Well, a gentleman came along and he kind of beckoned me to follow him, took me out this door here and he told me to wait here. And I appear to be outside the depot itself. If you look over there, you can see various modern and old trams. The bridge over the Tages is just up there. 
is just out there. If you look, there's an old tram actually coming along in public service. I think that red tram over there is possibly the tram I'm going to get. Yeah, it's coming around the corner now. So we've got two old trams coming. This is really quite exciting. It's not what I expected. So we've got number 572 on Route 18. We've also got number 580 on Route 18. But I think I'm going on this little red tram. I'm not sure where, but it takes me to the second part of the museum. This is really quite exciting. All this for four euros. Wow. Thank you. Oh, this is a luxury tram. Look at this. Okay, top sit down there. How luxury this tram is. It's like the executive tram car. If you look at the seats, I think, yeah, they go forwards and backwards depending on direction of travel. On where we're going. This really is um, very different to any tram museum I've ever been to. There's a depot there. You can see loads of old tram cars in there. So, yeah, for four euros, very good value for money. I'm not quite sure where we're going. Going all round the depot. Brilliant. Well, that was fun. So, after that luxury ride in a tram, the friendly tram driver took me to his tram shed. I don't know if you can see, but the tram I came on is just outside there, along with some Carice buses. He took me across the little yard. Oh look, he's turning the trolley pole around now. So I think he's probably going to go back maybe to pick up some more passengers. And he's taken me into this shed. So he's, I don't know what he said because he didn't speak English, but with a smile on his face, I think the impression I was told was have a look around and enjoy yourself. So yeah, what a sight. Let's go and um, explore the Lisbon tram meet. So here we are in the main shed of the tram museum. Let's start with one of the earliest trams in Lisbon, horse drawn tram number 100. And these are called Americanos because they were built in America. So Americano is also a tram, not just coffee. And you can see how the seating is that you just get on and off each side. This is what British enthusiasts refer to as toast rack because for obvious reasons. So there's quite a lot to see here, lots of different trams from various eras. All the others I think are electric with the exception of this horse-drawn tram so let's have a little wander around see what we can see. It does tell you a bit about each tram so we get an idea of when they were built. So this one for example number 44, no sorry 444 was built um, in 1901 and there were 75 of them. We can actually go in this one have a look. That's where the driver would have stood. Now he would have had a control handle which goes on there and that's how you know you drive forward and um, this is the interior. It's quite a, not quite as luxury as the one we travelled through the depot on to get here but still quite luxury and just look at all this wooden carving you know you just kind of can't imagine transport today going to this much trouble to make it nice. Everything is boring I suppose is the word but yeah they used to really make things look nice on the seats. Yeah, not bad. And as I said on the tram to travel on, they'd have them so they'd go for the way it travels. So if you look like this, you can move them forward and backwards. It's also quite useful because if you're sitting opposite someone, you could um, sit it, move it so you sit opposite someone. So yeah, very good. Let's, um, I think this is possibly the only one we can go on, but we can obviously have a look at all the others. Number 508 here. See the... Um, it's like cow catcher, it sort of would kind of be like a guard on the front. I'm not entirely sure how they work. If anyone knows a bit more, then you know, do comment and tell me. This one's bigger. This has got two bogies rather than four wheels like this one and all the little, um, they're called remodelados, the ones we see in the city in service. This is pretty big, this one, number 330. These ones are all four wheels. I think, as far as I'm aware, I think these are probably all serviceable as well. So it'd be great to see some of them out on the network. Whether they have like a guard where they send them all out, I don't know. There's number 5, 
435. There's a wagon here. So this must be like an engineer's wagon. Here you can see a bogey of a tram. So a tram body would sit on top of this. Now, you can actually go upstairs. There's a bit art no metro. So it's about art on the metro, I think. So let's go upstairs, have a look. Also, give us a good view of the tram shed. So let's see what we see. Uh, so what it tells you, look, is a map of the metro and it shows you the different arts and tiles you'll see in different parts of the metro. Talking of back in the other part of the museum, there was showed how the metro evolved. Well, the newest part of the metro is the line to the airport, which is really useful because that's how I arrived in Lisbon by plane. Maybe another day I'll come by train. Um, so you can just get straight on the metro and you're into the city within, you know, less than an hour. Let's give us a brilliant view up here of the trams. There's another big one there with a bogey one rather than a four-wheel one. Here's some art. Must have been taken out of the metro stations and put here. And I think that lady there, she must be Maria Kell, must be the artist who's designed this tiled map. So here, yeah, very fascinating. I haven't done too much filming on the metro. We did a bit on the video on the way over to um, Almada before we got the ferry. Because most of it's underground, there isn't a um, huge amount of interesting stuff to film but maybe another time we'll come and have a bit more of a look at some of the artwork. Let's have a look around the rest of the tram ship though. It's fascinating. Very yellow, a bit like Budapest, they like their yellow trams. I think this one's possibly a bit more modern. It's got a different shape, number 741. Well, we can find out by having a look, I think. Let's see when this one was built. Oh, it yeah, built in 1947, so a bit newer than the remodelados, but not as old as some of these. Keep hearing aeroplanes flying over. Also, because we're just below the bridge over the Tagus, you hear trains rumbling over as well. This tram is number 777, like Salamiel, the Southern Railway's King Arthur loco. But very different, obviously, to Salamiel. So we have more trams here. Here is a tower for maintaining the overhead wires. If we go through to the back here, have a transformer room. You can see the huge, what I think must be transformers, and there's all the controls. So no doubt, not going to, but probably once upon a time you could have pulled this lever down and switched off the power and trams all over Lisbon would have come to a halt. It might not have been quite like that, but probably could have halted some trams. Must be a transformer. They're huge. Look how big that is. If you look how, if I walk past it, it's it's massive. So, yeah, very. It's nice how they are preserving a bit of everything, not just the trams themselves. All of the infrastructure. We've even got some fire engines here. And then, as we come this way, we move on to the buses. So there's an interesting tourist buses along with more trams. Don't know too much about buses. Well that says AEC so I'm assuming that was probably built in Britain. That bus there is Volvo. Let's have a look. It looks very British. Um, so yeah I'm pretty sure that is a British built bus. I'm not entirely sure so anyone wants to comment and confirm you're welcome to. I think this one here 101 is a trailer car because I can't see Pantograph. So this would have been hauled possibly by a tram like this. You can see there's a coupling, but they don't seem to use trailers anymore. Have a look, you can see the interior of this Volvo bus. Um, can't go inside this one, some of them we can. Here's a couple more, more double decker buses, and here's another AEC bus. And we can actually go into this one, so let's go and have a look. This has a very, um, it's reminding me of on the buses. You know, you can just imagine um, Stan at the front driving it, and um, I can't think what his name is, but the clippy bloke standing here and um, looking, looking out for some attractive female clippies wanting to chat them up. It really has that on the buses feeling, being in a bus garage with a, a green bus. Let's go upstairs and have a look. It's 
nice that they do let you go inside. It makes it a bit more interesting than just looking at them from the outside. So no doubt many people would come running to the front. So what it's like, is it comfortable? Oh, oh very comfortable seating as well. I'd quite enjoy a trip around Lisbon on this. If I put the camera out the front window, you get a good view over the rest of the shed. We'll get back down. There's a couple more rooms to see, but I think we've seen all the trams, and I'm going to have to get back on that luxury tram, I think, and it will, he should take me back to the entrance, I assume. So I really do recommend this museum. It is, it's very good value, I think, for four euros. Not only do you get to walk around the museum, but the fact you actually get a ride on a vintage and luxury tram, I think, you know, is brilliant. Now this room, I think, is the print works. Take a look. There is all different letters and numbers. And these look like printing presses. Yeah, here there's drawers sort of letters and numbers. Everywhere, some smaller letters and numbers. Whether they're for printing timetables, etc. And if you have a look here, there's a roll of paper on, on a print work. So they must have printed out all sorts of timetables and um, various other documents. There's toilets in there, no need to show you that. Um, so yeah, very, it's a very good museum. And then it finally finishes with the shop. So I really recommend this museum. If you're in Lisbon, do come and visit the Tram Museum. I'm gonna now go through the shop, probably head back to the beginning. We'll see if we can see anything of the depot, so on we go. I'm not sure what happens now. The tram driver dropped me off here and he pointed in this direction. So I think I haven't finished looking around the museum. I thought I had, but it seems to go on forever. It's just starting to rain. Oh, by the way, I'm below the bridge. So as it is starting to rain, I'm glad to be going inside again. I wonder what we're going to find. So more buses. Yeah, more buses. Cool. There's a the front of a metro train now. That's pretty cool. Look at that. The front of one of the metro trains. I like that. I can actually go inside in the cab. Look at this. I didn't think I was going to get in the front of a metro train. There's a driver's cab. So they have this front of a metro train here. Now they have some more modern buses here and some older ones. So um, it looks. I'm not sure if these modern ones are preserved or if they're just here um, if we go in them that's got the old plastic seats it's very sort of 1970s looking okay. well it's like we can go in it it's cool quite um very functional <laughs> interior plastic orange seating let's go out and see what else so there's more than one here and the doors are open. So I'm not sure if this is a Volvo bus, if this is a preserved bus, or if um, cause it's very modern inside, which is one of the fleet that's just parked in here. I don't know, but if anyone knows and wants to comment and tell me, um, you know, please feel free to do so. I hear a compressor going off, it's not on this bus though. It's, <laughs> it's a bit of a strange museum, but in a good way. And then here's an open top double decker bus. And again, it looks like we can go inside. Oh, look at that. Thames Trader, a overhead line vehicle maintenance 
see. Let's go in here. More very plastic seats. Let's go upstairs. And we should get a good view of the depot from up here as it's open top. There's another older Therese bus down there. There's the overhead line maintenance vehicle and there's the top for those other buses. So it's a very good museum. I like it here. So like I said, if you're in Lisbon, do come and see this museum. It's really worth the four euros. I hope you enjoyed watching this video. Thank you very much for watching and please do feel free to like, subscribe, tell your friends, etc. Thank you very much for watching. Goodbye.